So hi everyone. As we all know, that today's topic is the importance of ethical leadership. I'm going to give you a situation, and then I would like you people to reflect upon that and let me know that if you are in that place, how you are going to respond. You are, you are the manager of a company, and the company is. Uh, the company is such a company where uh, it is banned to smoke or to carry any match box to the place, to the company. And there is a staff who is very, very reliable, dedicated, hardworking, and very loyal to the company. And he has been working in the company since last 25 years. One day you were on your round. And you were seeing that everybody is doing very sincerely their jobs. And there was some electrical uh, problem. And uh, you found that the same man who was uh, very loyal, he just, uh, uh, he just stood on a stool to correct it, to rectify that problem of the electricity. While he was getting down from the stool after doing that, uh, it happened that one matchbox fell down from his pocket. So now you are there as a manager. The employee is the employee is there who is the most dedicated and loyal and 25 years of experience in your own company, in the same company. And there is a rule or the principle we can say or the law of the company that no one can smoke or even carry a matchbox with them. Now it's up to you, my dear leaders, that you all are in the manager positions and above position, manager and above position, that if you are there in the place of that manager, how you are going to handle the situation? First of all, Sumaya, over to you. How will you handle this situation? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, might be uh, that employee has the matchbox and he was trying to uh, do something with electricity. Might be uh, he was uh, using that First of all, I will try to know what reason he kept that matchbox in his pocket. Then I will take the decision by. Uh, because only uh, for that Okay, he has a matchbox. I cannot, uh, I don't want to think his uh, loyalty and uh, um, efficiency because he's a good employee. Might be, he was using Thank you. Might be he was using that matchbox for, uh, uh, he was doing that. Uh, thank you, Sumaya, for your input. Now over to you, Rizwana. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. So, definitely, I will first of all, I will ask him, ki like, nah, I will call him in, a, like, uh, in my office, and then I'll, I'll ask him everything. Like, uh, uh, first of all, I ask uh, is, uh, like company rules and all, ki, kahi wo company ke rules bhool to nahi and after that, I will ask you, like, after 25 years, aap say your first time your mistake. So, definitely, he will tell me the uh, right thing. कि क्या रीजन है क्योंकि कोई भी अजम्पशन करने से बेहतर है कि उनको प्राइवेटली बुला करके उनसे पूछा जाए कि आपने मतलब ये इतनी बड़ी गलती आपसे कैसे हो गई ओके नाउ ओवर टू यू सीमा थैंक यू रिजवाना फॉर शेयरिंग मैं तो Yes, Ima. Hello. Yes, Ima, please. Hello. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, I guess same reply. Because there must have been any reason. Because the person who is too much loyal towards the company, there must be some reason having this matchbox. So he will definitely be called and he will be asked the reason. And if there is any genuine reason, means the person who has spent so many years in the organization 
हेलो यस यस हेलो यस वी आर लिसनिंग या द पर्सन हु हैज स्पेंड सो मेनी इयर्स इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ही हैज स्पेंड नंबर ऑफ इयर्स बिकॉज़ ही इज ऑलरेडी लॉयल टुवर्ड्स द कंपनी ही हैज गिवन हिज होल लाइफ टू दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन and his point of view listening to his point of view listening to him is as much essential as company is so i'll definitely call the person inside and he will be asked the reason behind that and if the reason is very genuine then definitely the favorable decision will be taken thank you seema thank you very much now anita ji over to you yes uh, halima uh, i look it into the two sides of the coin uh, they could be a reason genuine reason as everybody said but they also could be uh, something like he is addicted to smoking could be which was uh, hidden from the management and suddenly it has come out with, uh, you know um, uh, kya kehte hain use uh, unconsciously okay he would have been very conscious he may be smoking so i look at it two perspectives so as everybody said yes the ethics is call him to his uh, my cabin and ask him what was the reason why were you keeping that match box so what is the genuine reason he should be very very uh, honest in giving the reason either for smoking or for some emergency that is what two perspectives i see okay so thank you very much all of you for your inputs and for your uh, own uh, ideas about this i am going to speak about this later but before that let us just speak about little bit about ethical leadership so uh, when we talk about ethical leadership you know that without ethical leadership there is no leadership that is my firm beliefs that if the leaders they don't have trust integrity and if they don't have positive environment in the Uh, work in, at the workplace then there is no use of being uh, a leader a leader means that you have to follow some ethics some norms and uh, some uh, principles that makes you uh, an effective leader leader now first of all if we talk about the values there are many many values that is important here we are going to speak about some important values out of those important values i think that integrity is the most important value what we do what we say what we intend what is in our heart what is in our tongue everything has to be the same there won't be any difference there should be 100% transparency and consistency it should not be that today i am going uh, saying something else tomorrow something else and today my principles are something uh, some other things and then tomorrow it is going to change no so integrity is the important thing and that's the reason why leaders always set the example for others and they live to the principles they live to the um, laws and norms and rules and values of the company or of the organization so that the others need not to be told about this but they have to follow by looking at the example of the leader and in this way the leaders they built trust of the people because when the their followers see their leaders practicing punctuality practicing transparency practicing honesty practicing consistency practicing equality practicing uh, no biasness and uh, then naturally they all build trust in the leader and they are ready to share everything with the leader now after integrity if we talk about another important value that is respectful leadership so respect means that we have to give due regard and respect to all the human beings whether they are of certain race certain region certain religion certain um certain uh, beliefs with certain belief system it's up to them but we have to give them due importance and we have to give the importance to the diversity and inclusion everybody is important whether the person is black or white whether the person is uh, a bit uh, english or uh, non english or asian or whatever race that person belongs we have to give them equal uh, respect but we have seen in quite uh, uh, some places and in some cases that we are always we have soft corner for our own 
language people and sometimes we have soft corners for our religion people and that makes us our weak leaders that there should not be any consideration on the basis of language or religion or region because you know sometimes we will have south north uh, uh, south north uh, biasness sometimes we will have um, the hindu muslim sikh isai biasness sometimes we will have uh, hindi speaking non hindi speaking uh, biasness so these type of things we have to leave because leadership is above all these things if we are if we are the leaders then naturally we have to respect each and every human being each and every person who is in our contract then we have to establish a positive work environment that's only possible when we respect it should not be that i remember that when i, I was in delhi working with hamdad public school so there was a problem of the road the road is very narrow when it goes from main roads of sangam vihar to talimabad campus so that road is very narrow and always over congested so we wanted to just widen that road and we went to meet one uh, ias officer and uh, that development officer uh, delhi De development officer and when i went over there uh, we waited for him for 10 15 minutes that's nothing uh, like uh, that's nothing to be mentioned here because it is always that people they are busy although they give time but sometimes they are busy and they will make us wait that is not an issue but when we entered in his cabin i don't want to mention his name but his name is still i remember why i remember because the thing i have seen over there that in his cabin there was a gentleman who was 65 or 70 years old maybe 65 years old but looking like 70 years old and he was like attendant and uh, the young gentleman who was the is officer the gentleman was he was very young maybe in his early 30s he was so young and he was scolding him and he was yelling at him so badly that even i felt very bad as visitor i felt very bad that even if the person is a peon or attended or whosoever but he has respect he has self regard he has uh, we should not uh, make them like this type of uh, humiliation to the person i really felt very bad and the the respect i had for that is officer has drastically gone down in my uh, opinion in my eyes because uh, that is not expected from a person who is of that caliber who is of that position so that's why we have to have the positive environment by respecting each and every human being then collaboration and teamwork sometimes what happens that when we are collaborating and we are having the team spirit we have to sacrifice little bit you know maybe sacrifice our fame sacrifice our name sacrifice our hard work when we are in the team naturally some people are more hard working some are less hard working some are more talented some are less talented but the credit goes to each and every one equally so at times the leaders they think that okay why i am doing more and others are not doing that more why everybody should take the credit equally that should not happen it will happen when we are in the team some people will work more and some will work less but the team must go on alone we cannot do the things as we can do in a team so collaboration and teamwork it's all in the leader's hand then for the ethical leader accountability is important in uh, in many organizations i have seen that the people they believe in the blame game you know if anything goes wrong everybody will blame others superior will blame the juniors and it will go to the lowest person that it is his fault when wherever i was like working uh, i joined one uh, of the organization where i found that the people were like they were afraid of admitting their mistakes as if that if they will admit their mistake they will be thrown out of the organization but there i was the first one who started accepting the mistake i started accepting my own mistakes and i said yes this was my wrong decision this i made a mistake in the morning that it should had not been like this then slowly and gradually i found that people started speaking up about their mistake otherwise everybody is blaming to others instead of saying that yes i would have responded i would have responded to the issue i would have responded to the parents complaint i should have listened to the parents complaint everybody was just blaming to the junior person junior than them then the junior is blaming to some other person and in this way the blame game was going on that happens when we are not accountable we just come for the work and go 
we don't think that this is my responsibility and I'm accountable for each and everything happening here. Even today morning also, I was very angry with one of the staff in Delhi. Something happened with the purchase of books or sale of books. And I'm asking them, in fact, the head has already resigned from the organization. So the second hand, head has taken over. Then I was saying same thing that when you have taken over, naturally you must have taken the account of that. Now this time everybody is saying she left, she left, she left, she left. We don't have anything. We don't know what happened. We don't know any account about this. We don't know how many books sold and how many books uh, uh, returned and how many uh, payment made. This is just because the people are th working only for the sake of work. They are not working with accountability and responsibility. They are working for the work. They are working for the salary. So we have to hold ourselves responsible. At the other time, there are people who will always, like if, if a bomb is uh, uh, thrown into Hiroshima, the people will think that it is because of me. You will find that type of people also. For everything, they will blame themselves. This is my mistake. Because of me, it had happened. That should also not happen. As a leader, we should know that who has to be held responsible. Because it will happen only when we are very much good into a strategic planning. We, we plan the things. We plan the things at micro level. And then we have to divide the responsibility and fix the responsibility to the people. Then we can hold them accountable. It will happen in that case. So if anything goes wrong, naturally, morally and ethically, the head is responsible. but for that particular section, there is one particular person who is responsible and we have to hold that person responsible. So this is very, very important for being ethical leader. Then empathy in ethical leadership. Yeah, I must say that this I was lacking this aspect very badly if I talk about like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. You know, it was like I was very much into highly ambitious person and uh, everything, every work, whatever I do and wherever I work in the school, in the organization, I used to think that it is going to be on the top. That was my mission. And that's why I used to be very, very strict with the people, very, very strict with, the, with especially when the people are taking leave from the school. It makes me furious. It makes me like, I used to think that why the people that take leave, they can manage the things. But now I realize that there are certain occasions where they cannot manage where they have to, where like if, if the child is not well and if somebody's child is in the hospital, I cannot expect the person to come to the school. Even if the person is coming to the school, the person will not discharge, uh, will not discharge 100%. Then it is of no use of calling the person to the school. So empathy is very important, caring for others, effective communication, increased motivation. Every day when you come to the school, when you come to the organization, a beautiful smile on your face, a broad smile on your face will motivate each and everyone. And the way you wish the people like good morning or whatever way, namaste, assalamu alaikum, that has to be full of energy. And that energy released from you will transfer to the people whosoever is working around you. So one leader is enough to radiate energy among thousands of people. It all depends on you. There are some people I have seen early morning, they will go with a long face. If somebody is wishing good morning, they will just nod their head and go and sit on their chair and then waiting for the people to come with their issues and problems to solve. That is not the leadership. That's not empathetic leadership. Empathetic leadership is that when you want, when you want that how I wanted to be treated, similarly, the people want me to treat them. Okay, if I wanted that my boss should always see me with a smiling face, now I have to show them my smiling face. And I have to motivate them and I have to have the effective communication with them. So this is empathy is one of the very important value for the leadership. Now, my dear friends, you do every mistake in your leadership. You will be pardoned. You will be forgiven. But if you are not treating fair, you will never be taken seriously by your followers or by your people. This is something the people, they just hate if they are not treated equally. 
and it had happened i have seen mm -hmm. myself i have seen in one of my school the vice principal used to treat differently to different people there were two like two favorite people those who used to miss all the classes sometimes not going on time not submitting the lesson plan not submitting the things on time but their names were never sent to me instead all other teachers names were sent to me to so that i can issue the warning letters or i can call them for the counseling or other things and that makes the person a worse person the people they don't like this at all even if you're your own son or daughters are working your own relatives are working at the workplace everybody is equal and we have to treat them equally this is called fair treatment and that's why we have to eliminate the biasness we have to promote diversity and then we have to have equitable policies for the policy is for everyone now the role of courage courage is again a value that cannot be neglected if you are courageous you will take the decisions right now before starting the session i was discussing with anita ma'am that there are people who are like who are afraid of taking the decisions quickly you know it is said that justice delayed is justice denied if you cannot take decision on time it means that you are incapable of being a leader we have to take the decision and that requires courage if you have courage you can take the decision and you can move ahead you can inspire others even if your school is in the pathetic condition even if your organization is going into loss even if the things are totally up, ups and down totally are going against uh, the expectation but your face should always give the positivity and you have to uh, project in front of the people that yes everything is fine and everything is going to be all right by the end of the day and that courage that uh, inspiration they should receive from you and then in the ethical leadership we always uh, think about the sustainability and long term it is not day to day benefit that we are thinking but we are thinking about that how it is going to be uh, helpful for the organization to gain the long term gain where, where the school is going to get like uh, quality education it is not that for the admission sake i can change my principles i can change my ways i can start doing the bollywood songs in the school so that we can attract the crowd and we can have more admissions if it is against our policies that we should not promote bollywood song in the schools instead we should go for the quality based value based songs then we should be stuck on that because that is going to give a reputation to the school that is going to give a, a long term benefit to the school sustainability to the school so we should always think about the uh, sustainability then ethical decision making that i have already spoken little about this that we always should have the before decision we have to think that how this decision is going to be helpful for the organization not for the person we have to think only about the organization's benefit and uh, welfare so dear friends these are some of the values that is like important and without this i don't think that it is important that we will uh, be having the leadership uh, effective leadership so we have to follow these uh, that Uh, that's all from me now i request you all to kindly uh, ask questions if you have any questions related to the ethical leadership otherwise then uh, we will go to the we will discuss the challenges i would like to share something from my own experience at the present where i'm working my the chairman is uh, he basically is an hindu he has embraced uh, islam okay he has uh, adopted islam now what is happening is when we are in the uh, educational uh, organization we need to take care of different diversities right different uh, cultures different religions different festivals but here what he does is he doesn't celebrate hindu festivals saying that uh, ours is more of muslim clientele population so he says uh, ma'am uh, uh, parents will uh, not like it if we celebrate hindu festivals i said why when we are celebrating ramzan eid and whatever you know uh, muslim festival then why not he says then you take only hindu children and make them do that uh, ganesh idol and tying the rakhi and all that you know which is 
which is totally against my uh, ethical, what we have just spoken, what Halima, you have just spoken, the diversity, we need to respect everybody. So that is what is happening right now in my school where I'm working, which I don't like it, but as an employee, I have no say into that. But slowly, see, we need to educate our parents. Just uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you another small example. Before snacks, I have made a prayer for the children. Um, you know, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, uh, thank you, God, uh, for the lovely food we eat. Thank you, parents, teachers, and I am us. Thank you, God, for everything. Now, one parent came and complained. Why are you people asking uh, the children to join their hands and say the prayer? I said joining the hands or not joining the hands is not important. Thanking God, thanking each person, including IMRs, is very important. If your children are not joining hands, that's fine. We are not compelling them. Then what my chairman did, he called the teacher and he said, what is that prayer? I'm getting complaints. Then the teacher wrote the whole, uh, this thing, you know, prayer and said, then he called up the parent uh, and he read the prayer to that parent. Okay, okay, it's all right. Achha, achha, aisa hai kya, to theek hai. What is this? I don't understand. I mean, these are all ethics, Halima, and the group what I'm addressing. Yes, yes, you are, you are right. You are right very much, Anita ji. I am 100% with you. 